I'm Yuri Ladovano from Stanford University. Thank you for your interest in our paper entitled Real-Time Optical Biopsy of Colon Polyps with Narrowband Imaging in Community Practice Does Not Yet Meet Key Thresholds for Clinical Decisions, which was recently published in Gastroenterology. In 2010, Dr. Rex led the development of an expert statement on real-time endoscopic assessment of the histology of diminutive colorectal polyps under an initiative of the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy called the Preservation and Incorporation of Valuable Endoscopic Innovations, known as PIVI for short. As part of the PIVI process, Dr. Imperiali and I were asked to consider what research study designs could advance our knowledge in this area. At the same time, Dr. Gunaratnam and I had discussions about potential ways that community practices and academic centers could partner to conduct clinical research. Those were the origins of our study. As background, real-time endoscopic assessment of polyp histology using either narrowband imaging, or NBI for short, or other methods could potentially allow several strategies. One is a resect and discard strategy for diminutive polyps. With this strategy, surveillance intervals would be informed by so-called optical biopsy of diminutive polyps, combined with traditional pathology assessment of larger polyps. In addition, one could envision a strategy in which the decision of whether to resect a diminutive rectosigmoid polyp at all could depend on optical biopsy assessment. These strategies could decrease costs and could decrease the risk of complications. So far, experts have reported excellent test performance characteristics for optical biopsy with NBI. But until recently, little was known about the use of this technique in community practice or how to train practitioners in it in the context of their daily clinical work. Therefore, we designed and tested a training program in a single specialty community GI practice in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The research subjects were volunteer gastroenterologists they first trained in optical biopsy with an ex vivo computerized module that included a pretest, a self paced learning module, and a post test. Then they prospectively performed optical biopsy with NBI in real time for polyps found at colonoscopy during their usual clinical practice. A key part of this practice based learning phase was the requirement for the gastroenterologists to compare their optical biopsy predictions to the actual histopathological reading of the clinical pathologist. In addition, they received ongoing feedback on their test performance characteristics. We studied the results of the ex vivo training phase and the performance during the in vivo phase, including constructing learning curves as a function of number of polyps assessed. Our results were as follows. 12 of 13 subjects identified adenomas with greater than 90% accuracy at the end of the ex vivo computerized phase of the study. However, only three of 12 subjects did so with accuracy of greater than or equal to 90% in the in vivo phase of the study. Learning curves showed considerable variation among batches of polyps. We did not observe a steady improvement in performance over time, followed by a plateau at a given level. For diminutive rectosigmoid polyps assessed with high confidence at study end, adenomas were identified with mean sensitivity of 81%, mean specificity of 85%, and mean negative predictive value of 91%. This negative predictive value of 91% met the 90% threshold recommended in the ASGE PIVI. The agreement between surveillance recommendations informed by high confidence NBI analysis of diminutive rectosigmoid polyps compared to results from histopathology analysis of all polyps, was 80%. This value was below the 90% threshold recommended in the ASGE PIVI. Thus, our study suggests that better results in community practice must be achieved before NBI-based optical biopsy methods can be used routinely to evaluate polyps. However, we believe that this is a promising method. In the future, it is conceivable that refinements in training program design, including video clips for training or use of sharp frozen images, as well as improvements in endoscopic technology, such as optical magnification or computer-aided diagnosis, 
could improve the performance of NBI-based optical diagnosis in routine practice. We appreciate the interest in our study.